I hate my life. Now, what I'd like to do is, I beat that to death, I think, didn't I? I want you to take out your hand out. We're going to spend about seven minutes together looking at this handout. You will not be able to do all three pages of this handout in seven minutes. And please get your questions ready, because in a, just a couple of minutes here, I'll be able to open up the lines and find out what it is that's on your mind and what you would like to know for your questions and comments. So let me just take you through this. You'll have plenty of time. You can make a few copies. You get to erase it, go back to it, revisit it. This is gold your ha you have in your hand here. This is like self-coaching 101. And I actually use this with all of my clients. So let me tell you what this looks like. All right. I talked a few minutes ago about life purpose and that you're already doing it. So even if you can't articulate your life purpose and therefore your money purpose, don't worry. You're already living it because it's already the theme of your life. You just don't have a name for it. So here's ways you can find that out. You want to ask yourself, what do your friends and family rely on you for? Are you consistently the mediator? Are you consistently the peacekeeper? Are you the one who always makes plans? Are you the project manager in your family? Are you the researcher? If somebody needs information, are you the one they come to? You want to write these down. And the more you stay present in the question, the easier it will be to get to where you want to go. So if you can, sort of try to fake your mind out and not say to yourself, well, this will lead to my life purpose. Just ask yourself honestly. Assess what do people rely on you for. What are you known for as your reputation? And folks, like it or not, we earn our reputations. So if people know you as cranky, that's part of your brand. If people know you as the one, you can be curt at work, you know, like really brusque, but you always get the job done. That if somebody wants to know, you know, I find that uh, uh, with a lot of my executive administrative assistants, that if somebody in an org doesn't know what to do, just go to the admin. They know everything. Right? They know everything. And so is that your particular role in life? Um, I had somebody, I spoke to one of my new coaching clients, manager's manager, a couple of weeks ago. And we were supposed to meet for 10 minutes, and he had like two. And I said, give me one sentence to describe how you feel about this person. And he said, if I want an answer, she's my go-to person. If I want to find something that no one else can find, I go to her. All right. Number three, what role do you consistently play in yourself at work and in your personal life? Now, you may be saying, she just asked that number one and two. Yeah, I did. It's different ways of asking the same question because your mind is going to hear it differently than other people. All right? So you may hear it better in question three than in question two. It's not that I don't realize there's overlap. I do. All right, a couple more things before we get to your questions. The challenges that you're particularly great at solving will lead you straight to your life purpose. You want to talk about undiluted joy. Undiluted joy. There are things like, do you love photography and knitting and painting? There's your creativity. Uh, do you love sports? Do you love being the manager of a sports team where you get to, you're the one who makes sure that everybody's uh, spot on where they belong? Use your gift. Are you the one that can always deliver the bad news and have the person thanking you? These are things that you will automatically overlook because they're so easy for you. And, you know, I worked with somebody last year in my, in my uh, exit interview with her. I said, what if you had one takeaway? What, what was it? And she said, I'd forgotten how fantastic I was. That made me want to cry. Why? Because in, as a culture, as a work culture and as a family culture, we tend to focus on what's not working. And we totally lose focus on our strengths. And my Solomonism around that is, Focusing on your weaknesses is like pumping up the flat side of a tire. There's absolutely no point to it. 
You want to write down features of your personal brand. Now, these are the positive statements that people most associate with you when they think of you. Do they think of you as strong, as powerful? Are you a rabble rouser? Are you the person who always says yes in a room full of no's? And more of your brand. Again, we're going to go back to gifts and talents. Um, Number eight, theme and a pattern. If you look back on your life, eight and nine are, are great together here. If you look back on your life, you will find the emotional theme as well. Now, we don't have to go, we don't have time to really go into it uh, today, but emotional theme is you're the one who's consistently depressed when things don't work. You're the one who continu- continually uh, rallies everybody to the, to the job. Look for the themes. They will point directly to your life's purpose. And so I think I have gone on and on. Um, It has been a very quick almost hour. And what I'd like to do right now is find out why you're here. What needs to happen in the next eight or nine minutes that will make you think, wow, this is a really valuable use of my time. And remember I said... You get in life what you have the courage to ask for. I promise you that any question you're thinking, so are a hundred other people. So just get on and ask me what that might be. All right, Rudiger, are you going to get the questions to me, please? Okay. I'm sorry, I'm actually back. Sorry for the technical difficulties I've had before. It's roughly seven minutes time left, and um, please take advantage and type in the, any questions you might have. And I might lead off with the first question um, coming from my side, Nancy, is what is the one thing you want our listeners to do today to start that process? Acknowledgement. That's a great question. How would you do Acknowledgement. That? I'll tell you exactly how to do that. And by the way, these sheets, that, that this uh, life purpose discovery sheet, and by the way, if you can't get it now, we'll check the server, we'll figure it out, and we will we promise you we will send this out to you. So don't, don't worry about that, okay? I want you to have everything that you, uh, you came for. You're going to start with gratitude and acknowledging yourself. There is no tool more powerful in the 20 years I'm doing this than you writing down at the end of every day what you're grateful for and what you accomplished. What you're grateful for and what you accomplished. Because you can't get from point A to point B until you know where point A is. So you need to know what your strengths are, what your gifts and talents are. So if you wanted to come visit me, I'm going to give you directions differently from Africa than I would from Canada. Right? It's the same thing. If you want to move into a job that you're going to love, that you're going to be passionate about, that you're going to be one of those fools on Sunday night that goes, I can't wait to go to work tomorrow. You have to first acknowledge what you're made of now. And again, we focus so much on what we do wrong. If we spend twice as much time focusing on what we do right as what we do wrong, there would probably be no reason for me and I'd be out of work, so don't do that. And I hope that you found that helpful. If you have a question, please type it in, Mudiga. Yeah, one of the questions I received here from Ben is, uh, what is the best way to find your passion? I know what I like to do, but not sure I'm so passionate about anything that I would do anything for it. That's a great question. Passion is a byproduct of being on purpose. And so I have gotten many people will call me and say, can you show me how to get your, my passion? I, you know, passion is a feeling. You can't go to the store and get that. But when you're on purpose, when you've hit your groove, then you will know that because passion is the feeling that arises to let you know that. So there is a difference between the things you're good at and the things you love. I'm an excellent filer. I don't like filing. I shouldn't have a job filing. So what you want to do is make a distinction between what you're really good at and what, when you do it, makes you sing. And if you say to me, I have a job in a high-tech firm, but what I really love to do is um, teach baseball to nine-year-old boys, then you need to change your focus. Maybe you can't make a living at that, 
But what you can do is do that on the weekends and the evenings, et cetera. And that will passion everything else. That will fuel everything else you're doing. Rudiger, do we have time for one or two more questions? Um, Nancy, I'm afraid we're about to run out of time. There are a lot of great questions that actually came our way. And maybe, Nancy, you and I can work on it. Is we're posting this webinar on demand uh, starting tomorrow on NevadaSmallBusiness.com. Nancy, I will forward you the remaining question. Maybe you could help address them on that website I, as well. I would love to do that. And can we just put it out that whoever writes a question, I will answer? Perfect. We will, we'll make those okay. arrangements as well. Nancy, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, all the participants for uh, for being on the call today. Again, my apologies for any of the technical issues. Uh, again, is come and see us on NevadaSmallBusiness.com. Nancy's webinar will be there on demand starting tomorrow. But I also want to alert you to our up-and-coming webinar in April. We have one every um uh, months and the up and coming speaker is Scott Martineau. Um, Scott is uh, also a very fascinating speaker. He actually was the co founder of a small business which he built up to $20 million and he wrote a book about it. It's a New York bestseller and it's basically Conquer the Chaos How to Grow a Successful Small Business Without Going Crazy. And Scott will walk you through the six proven strategies to conquer that chaos and how to grow and grow without going crazy. Again, I want to uh, thank everyone for participating today. Come to see us at nevadasmallbusiness.com. And, uh, and Rudiger, thank you so much, I can, Nancy. Rudiger, I'd like to just interrupt. I want to remind everybody to go to my website, nancydsolomon.com forward slash Nevada State Bank. You will get the handout from today. You'll get a special report, 10 Ways Smart, Savvy, Successful Women uh, can transform their life, career, and relationships. There's also everybody who goes on that site, the Nevada State Bank site on my site, will get entered to win an hour one-on-one -on -one consult with me. That's a $595 value. So I would love to have a really hard time because so many of you went in and got it. And thank you. You've been a great audience. I loved your question, Nevada State Bank. Thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, allowing me to share your wonderful audience. Again, thank you, everyone, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on the 14th then. Have a wonderful day and a great rest of the week. Bye now.